Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Hot Talk HR. I'm your host, Mihai Noy. Let me ask you, on a scale of 1 to 10, how sure are you that you are fully aware of all the skills and competencies your people got to offer? Well, if you are not quite sure, let me tell you, you're not alone. This is why I asked my friend and colleague, Thomas Pop to reach out to the founding chairman of WAPI, Bruce Fesher Lippens, to talk about what it takes to build a skill-based culture. And while we talk about skill-based culture, we need to talk about trust-based culture as well, because culture without trust is not a culture. And while we were on the subject, we also talked about employee engagement. It's still, especially now in a lockdown, when most of our people, most of us work from home, it's still an important challenge. So how to achieve the right level of employee engagement so that our organization is enabled to win, not just during the lockdown, but beyond the pandemic. I hope you will enjoy today's episode. And if you do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. At Heart to KJR, we bring you fresh ideas and inspiring content from around the world of work. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Hard Talk HR. I'm your host, Thomas Papp. Today, I will be speaking with Bruce Fisher, Lippens, former Chief Talent Officer, um, worked at Euroclear, Solry, McKinsey, and the co-founder of uh, Huapi, an innovative employee experience platform. Uh, Bruce, welcome. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Great to have you with us. Uh, Bruce, uh, let me start with uh, with you. Uh, tell me about your journey in the lockdown and how and why it has reshaped your priorities in, 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 in future direction. Well, for me, it shaped a lot of my personal priorities. Um, in the beginning of January, uh, I found myself uh, doing a bit too many things. Uh, chief talent officer at Euroclear, combining it with, uh, with WAPI and then lots of personal things. So I had to realize that uh, I needed uh, more focus. And, um, and for me, it, it meant digging deeper into what I personally uh, wanted to do more, uh, what is really my internal calling. And, and for me, it was, yeah, it's, it's about WAPI. So uh, I'm now full-time, uh, not just co-founder of WAPI, but also really... 100% uh, building WAPI, uh, the vision, the strategy. And that gives an enormous liberating uh, feeling because it's, yeah, it's something we created, we found it, and, and our mission is to be an ally to future-proof the workforce and really unleash the strengths, the competencies, and the potential of people. And so we're there to work and uh, support organizations and HR uh, to do so. So in a way, without the lockdown, not sure I would have taken the courage uh, to make the more personal career choice um, and, and a couple of other things as well, of course. Steered you to a, to a new direction. It, it sort of helped you, nudged you towards a, a, new, a new part as such. It helped me to find my inner core and my real inner voice. So a bit more to call it the spiritual element of, uh, I, I believe very much in, uh, in the combination of the spiritual, the emotional, the mental and the physical. And um, I think this was for me a bit, yeah, going back to, wow, what do I really want to do? Uh, <laughs> mm. yeah, I really, really, really want to do. And that the lockdown helped to be outside and then uh, just walk in nature alone <laughs> with the family. Indeed, indeed. Uh, tell me, employee engagement is still, or probably even more so, one of the top priorities for HR and business leaders. Tell me, in your view, especially in today's uh, challenging times, what HR can and must do to improve engagement? That's a big question. Uh, I'm not going to claim that I know the answer uh, to all of them, uh, but out of experience and of, out of what I have seen and out of things we have tested, I would say there's probably two or three things. One is, for me, uh, let's put the employee really in the driver's seat of uh, their career, their development, and that's for that's why... Give, give a little bit of way of control, be the facilitator, be helpful, but let's put the employee really in the driver's seat. Yeah. But really, yeah, not just cosmetically, really in the driver's seat, uh, which also means 
let's allow for plenty of organic connections within an organization and even outside an organization. Yeah. Uh, let's collaborate with each other. Uh, let's uh, work more on project mode with each other. Yeah. Um, more purpose driven. Um, let's make sure that uh, people have culture is important. That means make sure people are communicating transparently with each other, give feedback to each other, mentor each other. I think all of these aspects all together brings employee uh, experience um, or engagement uh, in a way. And let me take two concrete examples. Um, in previous company I worked, we have seen engagement actually go up uh, drastically <laughs> uh, throughout the pandemic. And that was because we were able to create a sense of, uh, wow, community more together. And people were actually connecting more with each other. Uh, but across boundaries, uh, the pandemic helped us to see that there are less boundaries because we're all virtual. We're more inclusive with each other. Let's make sure we keep that uh, even beyond uh, the pandemic. So let's talk about skills and competencies. Uh, many of our employees mm -hmm. have skills and competencies hidden from their leaders. Um, hence, we are unable to tap into their full potential. Um, tell me more about what is your view on a skill-based culture? If I think about a skills-based culture, I think about multiple ingredients. Yeah. Uh, first of all, isn't it crazy that we're all on LinkedIn where we share our skills? but we don't do it internally. Yeah. So first ingredient, let's make the skills really visible. Therefore, you need a platform to do it. Yeah. We know each other, nice, good, but after, if you're more than 100 people, it's, it doesn't work anymore. Create and have your internal LinkedIn where people are in the driving seat to put their own skills in it. What am I strong at? What are my competencies? What are my values? What drives me? What do I want to do? That's the basic starting point. If you have that, let's make sure that that platform enables you to connect very quickly based on skills. Yeah? If I'm looking for somebody who's good in data science and speaks French, that in a few clicks, back, here is a colleague and here's the phone number and now you can connect, call each other, work together, create a project together. That's step two. Thirdly, a skills-based culture we talk a lot about upskilling and reskilling, and we have this famous statistic that 50% of the workforce will need to be reskilled and upskilled. Honestly, I hope I don't hear that anymore because it should just be embedded in our DNA as an organization. And there, if you put people in the driving seats and they take accountability, upskilling and reskilling will go automatically. Um, that means that as a person, you should, and as a company, you should incentivize your people to learn and upskill yourself. And as a person, you should take that. That means ask for feedback. Take that feedback, but make sure that the feedback is honest, genuine, and it's only visible to you, disconnected from performance management so that you get the true feedback so that you can improve. Mentorship, be mentor for things you're good at. Be mentee uh, for things you would like to improve. Yeah, do that. And that's how you can upskill, reskill. Um, that's also, by the way, what you see, the, the, the people who are flying through, they take accountability for that. So if I recap, for me, skills-based culture, it's about making the skills really visible, people-led, uh, people yeah? uh, connecting uh, super quickly based on the skills, not just on the names you have. Uh, therefore, forget, in a way, job titles and all of that, less important. Uh, and then thirdly, feedback, mentorship, continuous growth, matching opportunities for learning for opportunities. That's how you upskill and reskill in a way yourself. There's even uh, companies that are actually now providing a bonus uh, based on how much uh, you developed instead of purely your performance. I think there's something in it. Mm, indeed, indeed, completely agree. Um, trust builds culture, culture builds trust. A question of uh, chicken and egg. Nevertheless, especially nowadays, 10 months into the pandemic, trust is one of the most important priorities. How would you recommend to build culture, uh, enforcing trust in organizations? Well, that's another uh, big question where, where you can talk, I think, for very long and philosophically. Um, again, I'm not going to build the major claims here. Uh, from experience, from reading the books like Culture Code and, and, and all of that, but mostly from experience. Again, there's a couple of things that build trust yeah, and culture. Uh, in a way, it, a lot of the things are related. Openness and transparency. Yeah? 
Um, and in the companies I worked, we always scored quite low uh, on the engagement survey on transparency and communication. You cannot communicate enough. But communication should be two-way, not just top-down. Yeah? Which comes back to the second point. Is there an open, safe culture where people can be really themselves? If, if you come into the office, do you need to take off your mask or can you be just literally yourself? Uh, and the pandemic is interesting yeah? because you don't physically enter the building anymore. Yeah? So I think it's a very interesting one to reflect on uh, for each of us. But can you be 100% yourself? But are you also, is there a safe space to uh, be yourself, express yourself, give feedback to others, share ideas with others? That's one. Secondly, as I said, the communication. It is so important. Are we all a bit on the same page? Are we not just traditionally, hierarchically doing top-down communication? Very important. Yeah. A third one, um, can, can we allow ourselves to be a bit more vulnerable, a bit more personal as well? Do we know each other? Yeah? Or do we just know the person in a very transactional way that is there at work? Or do we know the person a little bit better? Mm. And if we observe that there is something, do we ask, how are you doing, Thomas? What, what happened today? Or are we avoiding those conversations? Yeah? I think if you go into the root uh, of the people, um, that's where you create a real connection. And if there's a real connection, that's where trust is built. And that's, in the end of the day, where culture is built. Um, those are, for me, the, the things that I think about. It, it, in theory, it's not difficult. Uh, in practice, uh, it is much, much, much more harder uh, to do so, certainly. And there, of course, culture, values, uh, all come into play. Uh, and then the whole HR comes into play. Yeah? Are, we, yeah, are we incentivizing the right uh, things? Are we really putting people at the center or not? Are we all okay to give away some ego <laughs> and mm -hmm. to listen much better to each other? If we're able to do that, I think trust uh, comes automatically. Yeah, and it's not something we write on a piece of paper and we put on a wall. It's something that we do. It's in our behaviors. That's for me, uh, trust uh, and culture, um, certainly. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. It's all about relationships and being able to build those relationships in a, in a succinct way. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it is definitely a tough one, but uh, hopefully we will get there. Um, if... A fool with a tool is a is, is still a fool. Um, Huapi is a great mm -hmm. tool, and many organisations are deploying great HR technologies. Some with great, others with disappointing results. How would you suggest to ensure that a new piece of technology like yours bring lasting and positive impact? Of course, I'm, I'm as a co-founder of Huapi, I'm probably biased, and and I like what we're doing. Uh, but the fact that I also now fully in it. It's because I 100% believe in it, yeah? But I will share the transparent uh, stories, yeah? Uh, on, on, and I agree with you, a fool with the tool. I love that expression. First of all, WAPI is there to be an ally or a partner, yeah? For your organization to unleash the people, teams, uh, and really the full uh, skills and competencies uh, of your people, yeah? Basically, future-proof your workplace. And uh, the way we do that is by bringing viral change and our WAPI platform. The combination of both is needed. And we come to that essence. Bringing change, you need the two. It means that viral change, and we have our recipe, we have our sauce, we know what to do. Things like if you want to uh, bring in a feedback culture, for example, uh, just giving the tool will not work. But make a little video where somebody gives feedback to the CEO. Make it viral. Ask your leaders uh, to ask five feedbacks uh, from the N minus three and minus four so that you break the ice and have the snowball effect. So we know which moments are important. Uh, so we do that in our, call it light touch viral change approach. And we're there to help HR and management and employees to do so. And at the same time, you need a platform. Why? Because we live in a digital uh, age. Yeah? So you need to make it visible. We spoke about making it visible. So that's what WAPI does. WAPI brings you direct benefits. We'll, make the skills of your people directly visible to everybody in a very organic way. Therefore, secondly, they will collaborate with each other much faster. And we see that we have a collaboration index that goes, uh, that is actually increasing very fast. Innovation happens faster. Um, and, and that's nice to see. Uh, but also, uh, secondly, the platform allows you to, yeah, I, I receive personalized job opportunities. I receive personalized learning opportunities. And that, of course, 
I, I win time uh, with it, but I can advance uh, faster in my career. So we see at clients that internal mobility uh, goes 10% uh, faster, yeah? uh, which is actually beautiful, uh, beautiful to see. Um, thirdly, everything around trust is in there. People are able to give each other 360 feedback in a very light way, a bit like we have you know, Google Maps or Waze in a very app way, yeah? but it's real personalized feedback. Nobody else can see it, very important, disconnected from performance management. You can ask feedback, you can receive feedback, it can, can be in a very structured way on values and on skills, which is really important. Yeah? And the tool will then say, hey, Bruce, you're good at X, but you can improve Y. And here's a learning and here's a training you could do. So it, it's actually a beautiful, a beautiful way to do so and to continuously develop, uh, of course. There's a mentorship uh, piece in it, which is really crucial. Uh, and we see that uh, in a couple of clients. It was amazing to see that they went from 50 mentors to 500 and 1,000 mentors in a couple of weeks. Yeah? Because you can perfectly say, voila, I'm, I would like to be a mentored on Agile. And then up, I click and Thomas, you are an, a mentor on Agile. The connection is made and we mentor each other. Yeah? So we see a huge amount of mentorship, which is increasing uh, retention and engagement of people. We have statistics on that. Uh, but secondly, it, um, yeah, it brings a lot of organic connections and it lowers training costs because you actually have people in-house and colleagues in-house that you didn't know uh, were there. So you need it both. You need the, the visible uh, platform, but that's really app-like, like you have at home, uh, which sometimes we're lacking in HR, if I'm really honest, on that whole talent uh, spectrum. Huh? Uh, even for succession planning, uh, team builds, all of these things uh, in an integrated way. That's what WAPI does. And then, of course, the viral change, which we also do, because we're not just going to throw a tool to a fool. Uh, in your words, uh, we try to uh, bring both uh, together. Yeah. And, of course, this continues to evolve. Uh, we design, the tool has been created by employees for employees, and we keep that same spirit. We have client panels, and we create it uh, all together. In a way, that's, that's our way of doing employee crowd, crowdsourcing uh, of, of ideas. We believe very much uh, in this concept. Thank you, Bruce. It's uh, truly been a pleasure speaking with you today. And how can we reach you in case, we want, if, in case our audience would like to ask you any further questions regarding uh, what we talked about here today and perhaps uh, also about uh, your solution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, well, we have, uh, of course, a website, uh, www.wapi.com. Wapi is interesting. Wapi is human happy, but it's um, the biggest lake uh, and natural park in Argentina. Oh, wow. And it embodies organic feeling. And that's what we stand for. Wapi is not easy to spell. It's H-U-A-P-I-I. -I. So one P, two I's. Yeah, that's Wapi. <laughs> Uh, there you can find lots of information. You can reach us. And then, of course, through LinkedIn, you can find my name, which is also even more tough to spell. Uh, Bruce uh, Fisher uh, Lippens. Uh, but I'm sure we can uh, put it somewhere uh, with Perfect. the links. And I'm more than happy to uh, talk with uh, all the HR colleagues and peers. Um, I feel that we have a bit the same cause and the same mission uh, to improve uh, the workplace, unleash our people, and... Uh, Think that's how we connect with each other mm -hmm. thank you again bruce thanks very much for thank uh, very much for, uh, being with us so ladies and gentlemen and uh for uh the next episode of hard talk hr until then uh see you later thank you very much bye bye stay in touch